So now that we have our new image open and we're ready to begin working with it, the first thing we want to do is we want to select a brush. And the way that we do that is we use this menu over here and we click right here on this icon and this is going to open up several items for us to look at all in one place. We've got down here a preview of our dab and our stroke. We've got our recent brushes and we've got our various different category displays. As you can see, they're displayed as a list over here. And we have our variants displayed as a list as well. Now, if they are displayed as icons, this is what you would see instead. So if we go over here and display as icons, you would see this type of display instead. And that's just a matter of personal preference. Generally speaking, I find the icons are not clear enough for my purposes to be able to pick and choose what I want. So I tend to like to have the text with them. So I tend to display my categories and my variants as a list. And that just makes life a little easier for me. Now this little fly out menu that you see me keep clicking on, this is something that you're gonna see throughout the painter interface. And it's a good idea to get used to checking out these context menus because they can really be helpful. Now, you'll notice we have two check marks here in this list. And the first one is for recent brushes, which is at the top of this dialog. And at the bottom, we have dab and stroke preview, which is this little portion here. If we don't wanna see the dab and stroke preview, for instance, we can simply turn that off. And you can see that this expands out to fill that space. Likewise, if we don't wanna see recent brushes, we can turn that off and this will expand to fill the space. So it's just a matter of preference as to whether or not you want to see those things. As a general rule of thumb, I'm gonna go ahead and leave those off for right now so that we can maximize our space so that we can see our categories and our variants. Now, to begin with, when we're working over here, we're dealing with our categories. And our categories are going to be things like acrylics, airbrushes, artists, blenders, chalk and crayons. And in this instance, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab the side of this and pull this out so that we can read all that text. Charcoal and Conti, cloners, digital watercolor, erasers, and so on and so forth. You can see there's quite a few different categories, and each one of these is going to contain a particular set of variants. So if I were to click on, say, the real watercolor, for instance, which is a new category, you'll see that we end up with a completely different set of variants. And again, if this is something where you want to see what each one of these is going to look like before you select it, you can do the dab and stroke preview. And by hovering over these, you'll see that we get a different dab and stroke preview for each one. So this can be sometimes useful if that's something that you find valuable. I don't necessarily use that myself, but it's something that you should be aware of if you're trying to navigate through what all these might look like. Generally speaking, after a little while, even though there's many, many hundreds, I think something like 700 brushes in Painter, as you begin to work, you'll find your favorites. And I would highly recommend that you explore some of these categories as we're going along because, for instance, the acrylics is one that has what you would think of as typically acrylic paint type brushes in there. Different characteristics of these brushes will become pretty apparent to you as we're going through future videos. But generally speaking, the way that Painter operates is you choose a category, then you choose a variant. And once you've chosen a category and variant, so for instance, I'll go back to our original category, which was pencils. And I'll go ahead and choose the original variant, which was a real 2B pencil. And now if I click and drag in the canvas, you'll see that I'm creating a pencil mark. Now I'm getting a very slow mark and there's a very good reason why I'm getting this slow mark. But before we get into that, we're gonna go ahead and take a break and we'll pick this back up in the next video.